Alrighty, hello hackers, here we are. Just a very quick tutorial to show you how to connect your SQLite database to your Python application. So just sitting here in DB Browser, um, I have got my very simple database open and you can see that it's just got the one main table in there. So obviously it would probably be easier to store this data in another way, but uh, for the purpose of this, it will give you a good indication of how the database connects. So we've got a table called names. The names table has just the one field apart from its primary key ID over there, which is a name text. And if I browse that data, you can see that I've just got uh, four um, people's names in there. So close that one down, jump over into PyCharm, and you can see here that we have our three uh, files. So the third one is this data store file here that's got nothing in it at the moment. Um, so the main file here connects our user interface that has all of our code here that our user will see and all of the code that um, interacts with the user with what they do. So grabs the input and shows them any output there. So if you you know want to pause the screen and have a quick look at what some of these things do, we will use these functions a little bit later and you'll see that over in the main file, we do link them together. Now I have already pre-written all of this code. So you can see here that the data store um, functions are already named and ready to go. So it's gonna be super important to make sure I get the same name exactly as is and pass through any arguments um, or at least know what the arguments are that are coming through. So over into our data store file, first thing we need to do is import our SQLite3 package so that we can use any of that functionality there and then create our class. So this one's gonna be data store. Okay, and then uh, as always, for the next thing we should do is create our constructor or our init function. So you've got there the init ready to go. And this is where we connect our database uh, to our Python app. So we're gonna say self.connection. Okay, now you can name this variable whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. The main code here is the sqlite3.connect. All right, and then you're gonna give it the file pathway. So in this instance, it's super easy for me because the database itself is stored over here in the same folder. So I can just type the database file name and extension in there. Um, obviously, if you have this stored somewhere else, you would need to provide the entire path uh, to the file. Um, and then the last thing we need to do is create our cursor. So we're gonna have our cursor um, variable that we're gonna create, and this one's just gonna be self.connection.cursor. Now, all this is to do is to make it a little bit quicker and easier so we don't have to type in sqlite3.connection.cursor, okay? Because we're able to grab um, all of that information now with just this little variable here. So on to creating some of the functions that we're gonna use. We're gonna create three quick functions, one that selects everything in the table, one that selects just a name itself, and then the other one that selects, uh, allows us to insert a name so that you can see what each of those things would look like. And I'm gonna show you a quick little tip on how you can um, construct your query so that it cleanses your data for you so that we protect it against any SQL injection attacks and also uh, makes it a little bit easier to read. Uh, so let's get started. So we're gonna have a define uh, select all names, okay? Um, and all this one is gonna do is show us a really quick indication of how to get a query to run. So I'm gonna have that one sitting there. So um, self.cursor.execute. So we're grabbing our SQLite cursor and we're telling it we wanna execute a query. Okay, and then I'm gonna create um, three um, double quotes there and then just type in the query that I want. So I'm gonna say select star from names. Okay, because that's the name of the table that we want. All right, now this has got uh, an issue because yeah, at this point in time, it thinks that it's not connected to the database, but that's okay. All right, and then the last thing we need to do with this particular function is return the values themselves. So we're just gonna return self.cursor dot fetch all. All right, now this is not necessarily the best way to package all of that information, but it is a nice quick and simple way to do that. So if I come up here and run my main function, okay, you can see that my little menu appears and if we ask it re to return all names, it just packages that up nicely into a little list there um, and gives us our, um, all of our data. So obviously if there's a lot more appearing, you might want to format that in a way that makes it more readable for your uh, user. So we'll get rid of that one and keep going. So the next function we're looking for is when we're going to search for a particular name. So we're going to say select name this time. 
Um, now you'll notice that I'm using the keywords that would appear in the query as well when I name my functions. That's just a, a little thing that I do to make it a little bit more obvious for what that function is going to do. And in this instance, because we are searching for a name, I need a name argument passed through. All of that information would come from our user interface file and be passed it through to the data store via the main file there. Okay, so select, um, what are we doing? So same again, so self.cursor.execute. Okay, and in this instance, put our triple quotes in. Okay, and we want to run one that says select, this gets a little bit confusing, name from names where name equals, and then I wanna have a colon name semicolon. Okay, now how that's actually formatted will make sense uh, once I type this little section in here. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're actually saying that we wanna create and pass through a variable and that variable is gonna come from down here. Okay, and this cleanses our code, okay, so that it stops any SQL injection attacks and it is also going to make it a little bit more legible. So I want you to imagine that we were creating like a new person record here rather than just a name in the database and this particular name or this particular record had things like first name, last name, date of birth, address, phone number, height, weight, and whatever other things you can think of, okay? What that would allow us to do is when we're selecting a specific person and we're gonna have a lot more queries here, we can then list those down uh, the page and then it makes it very easy for us to be able to read that their name is Ben and their last name is Hyde and their whatever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's just gonna make it a little bit easier to read. Also cleanses the code to stop an SQL injection attack for us, which is fantastic. Um, and that's it for that one. Okay, um, one key thing to remember is you must put your comma here at the end of your double quotes. Okay, before you move on to your curly braces. Now we'll work on the last function and then we'll add our um, destructor at the end. So I'm gonna have an insert name this time. Okay, and this one is, whoops, self and name. All right, and then from there, it's still the same, self.cursor. So this section doesn't actually change um, too much ever. Okay, triple quotes, and then I put in what I want. So I'm gonna have an insert into names, name. Okay, and then on the next line, because it's the way I like to format my queries. Um, we need that one, name and a semicolon. Comma at the bottom there, curly braces to show where this is gonna begin, name, colon, name. All right, so that one's now done. Um, so as you can see here, this is more what I was talking about where if we have loads and loads of lo and loads of them, it's gonna be a bit more of an issue. Um, let's just change this to SQLite and that should clear up some of those issues for us. All right, and then the last thing we wanna add here is a when the program finishes, write any changes to the DB. Cool, so we are just gonna create our little destructor there. Okay, and in this instance, all it is is self.connection.commit. Okay, so that commits all the changes to the database and then we'll have a self.connection.close, which closes our connection to the database as well. Okay, so just gonna press run on that one and you'll notice here that we have a return all names and that one just appears as is. Okay, that not, not much has changed there. Uh, check to see if the name is in the database. If I enter Ben, you can see that we get our little message that says record does not exist. Okay, uh, if I come in and check it again, but this time enter a name that's in there, it returns that record for us, which is good. If we wanna insert a name, I can now insert Ben to the database. And if I return all names, you can see that Ben's data is now there as well. And then if I hit four, it closes my application and writes all those changes to my database. Okay, so that's it. That's a really super, 
super quick and easy way for you to be able to connect your data to the or your database to your Python app. Uh, and then from here, uh, basically, you can start to implement some much more um, extravagant data stores. So it's going to make your apps a little bit more user friendly and easier to use. And I hope to see you over in our next video.